Hey, Matt here with M3, and we're doing uh, M3 Mastermind tonight, and we're doing Lesson 12. It's uh, magnifying your mind. It's the concept behind um, masterminding and how to take your results from, you know, just being successful or highly successful uh, and really how to blow them out in ways that you never even thought possible for you. So I'm going to share a screen here and we're going to get started. Simple lesson. Uh, all of our lessons at M3, there it doesn't matter if you're applying them one, two, three, four in order that way. You can take each lesson individually and apply it and get great success for you and your life at any given time. So always think about that when you're coming into this or whatever lesson you're deciding to to watch on recording, it, it has the power to change your life right then and there. That single lesson does. Every single lesson and everything that we share here at M3 has that. Share screen. I'm going to dive right into this stuff. It's a very powerful lesson. So uh, masterminding, easy for some, uh, hard for others. We have a lot of limiting beliefs that keep us from doing this. Masterminding, uh, getting together with other people. I like to share with people that we have a Goldilocks zone for being able to get what we want. And that Goldilocks zone is whether or not we're learn, uh, learn capable or teachable. And on the one side of the Goldilocks zone is that I can't learn. I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not going to be able to do the thing. So there's constantly being blocked. Whatever message that might be sharing uh, with you is not getting in because you just don't even think it's possible for you. And then the other side of it is that I already know. So many people, there's, they're dying to tell you how much they already know. So they never get to learn anything new. Uh, the proverb says is that you can't add anything to a cup that's already full. So make sure that we're always opening our minds up, creating space, the beginner mindset, it's not that I don't, I can't learn, is you can learn, you're teachable, you, you're a, a, a learning device is what you are. There's no other learning device like you in the world. So you can learn anything and you know that about yourself, but you need to open up to that point and say that there's something here for me to learn. I don't need to show everybody what I know already. I need to be confident in the fact that I already know that, but that whatever's in front of me is here to teach me a lesson. And that's what masterminding, we must sweep all that other stuff aside and open ourselves up to that, that Goldilocks zone that says I can do this. And your masterminding is gonna be the same. Your action steps at the end of this, I really want you to pay close attention to that and keep yourself in that beautiful Goldilocks zone. That's how you get everything that you want in this world. Napoleon Hill discovered that your greatest success and your quickest success comes from helping others succeed. It's, it's interesting how it's designed that way. It's not about you going out there and trying to find how you can get more and how you can get more and always putting this feeling out there that you don't have enough. Uh, there comes a point when you realize that you're wonderful and unique in yourself and you have something great to share. And in those moments when you're sharing great things with other people, oftentimes are the times when you get your greatest reward. So I tell people, if you want to learn more about what you're learning on M3, then take the time to set aside a moment where you can teach it to somebody else, because teaching gives you the ability to learn so much more. You teach it, you learn it. Boy, you learn it. You learn it on a deeper level. You think you know something until you try to teach it. And you actually don't know it until you can teach it to somebody and teach it to somebody fairly effortlessly from any angle. Zig Ziglar said that you can have anything that you want in life if you just help enough people get what they want. I want to share this with you guys. This a basis, a big part of what this lesson is comes from um, Price Pritchett's book. It's it's called You Squared, and it's it's the concept of taking you and you're an infinite being, by the way, and then squaring that. Like, what is that? You know. But wherever you are right now, you take your current results and imagine if you square them. Squaring something means you multiply that thing by itself. So like four times four is 16. You know, we're not adding four to four and getting just eight. Four times four is 16. Well, imagine adding you, not adding, multiplying you, your current results by themselves. Imagine that right here, right now, as you do that. And that's what this is all about. And that's what this little book is about. And I want to read this story to you here. Hey, Jeff, glad to see you here, buddy. 
I'm about to read uh, the opening story to you squared. You're right on time, man. It says a true story. I'm sitting in a quiet room at the Millcroft Inn, a peaceful little place hidden back among the pine trees about an hour out of Toronto. It's just past noon, late July, and I'm listening to the desperate sounds of a life or death struggle going on a few feet away. There's a small fly burning out the last of its short life's energy in a futile attempt to fly through the glass of the window pane. The whining wings tell the poignant story of the fly's strategy. Try harder, but it's not working. The frenzied effort offers no hope for survival. Ironically, the struggle is part of the trap. It is impossible for the fly to try hard enough to succeed at breaking through the glass. Nevertheless, this little insect has staked its life on reaching its goal through raw effort and determination. This fly is doomed. It will die there on the windowsill. Across the room, 10 steps away, the door is open. 10 seconds of flying time and this small creature could reach the outside world it seeks. With only a fraction of the effort now being wasted, it could be free of this self-imposed trap. The breakthrough possibility is there. It would be so easy. Why doesn't the fly try another approach? Something dramatically different. How did it get so locked in the idea that this particular route and determined effort offered the most promise for success? What logic is there in continuing until death to seek a breakthrough with more of the same? No doubt this approach makes sense to the fly. Regrettably, it's an idea that will kill. Trying harder isn't necessarily the solution to achieving more. It may not offer any real promise for getting what you want out of life. Sometimes, in fact, it's a big part of the problem. If you stake your hopes for a breakthrough on trying harder than ever, you may kill your chances for success. Such a powerful book, like 37 pages, and it has such mind-blowing ideas and simple ideas put in practical terms there. And I want us to take this in and this lesson in from the point of view that um, just because you're not getting the results in your life, you know, it doesn't mean you need to deem yourself worthless or that you're not a, a hard worker. A lot of people are working very hard in the world, but they're very closed minded to any ideas like the idea of the fly flying across the room to the open door. Uh, you're not open to the ideas, so you're stuck in that space where you're trying to fly through the window pane and you're not getting the results that you want in your life. And we're internalizing that saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not doing well enough. I'm going to mute you, buddy. Is that okay? Actually, I don't know if I can. Can you? Thank you, sir. So we internalize that stuff from that point of view. Like, I'm bad. I'm not doing good enough. I'm not good enough. And what does that do? That keeps us stuck in that pattern because I need to work harder. You're telling ourselves, I don't work hard enough. That's why I don't get the results. And what we really want to do in this last lesson, this lesson number 12, is sweep all that stuff aside and stop telling ourselves that message because it's that message that's making that show up for us in our life. And we're going to open our minds up. Like I said, to that Goldilocks zone, we're going to open our minds up to that there's another possibility for me out there. Not only that, that there's another possibility out there for me where I hardly have to do anything. Because the truth is between where you are now and the goal that you want to get is infinite possibilities. So within there is a possibility where you work as much as you want doing whatever it is that you want to do. But in order to get that, we have to open our minds up to that. We're going to open our minds up to the mastermind principle, which is about giving, about you understanding you and what you have to give and being able to connect that with other people who are getting massive success uh, and, and can have some real solutions for you and your business. This is so important. This is the lesson that takes things like chicken soup for the soul. And instead of having that book be a bestseller, that's what makes that book a phenomenon. This is what takes a brand that might fall in line like a, a duck in line, like a computer, uh, like Apple, and makes them a phenomenon. That's what this stuff really is. This is what makes Amazon, Amazon. You know, it's ideas like this outside of the box. I mean, for crying out loud, think about this, that Amazon just started off as an online place to buy books. That's it. And they took over the world from there. Powerful, powerful ideas here. 
all by thinking about what it is that you can give. And that's masterminding, coming together with like-minded people, people that are of the same mentality in the form of what it is that you're trying to do in your life. You're trying to do something in a bigger fashion. They're of that like mind. They want to take their business to a bigger place, or maybe they have taken their business to a bigger place. We don't want to mastermind with people that are going to sit around in a circle and talk all about uh, how the world is coming to an end and things just keep getting worse. That's not it. We want to get masterminded with people that are of that same like mindset that we're growing and everything is possible. Anything is possible. And really, it's about giving. We're letting go of limiting thoughts, limiting thoughts such as I don't know enough. Those are thoughts that are going to stop you from reaching out to people and say, hey, I want to learn more from you. And I have heard CEOs say plain and simple and people that have achieved high levels of success, I've heard them and recordings before say that, you know, not one person ever asks me out to lunch and says, how did you do what you did? Or we think on the other side of that is that those people wouldn't even be available or maybe they don't want to even talk to me because I don't know enough. But that's not true. That's limiting beliefs of what we're talking about here. These people don't even have people coming to them and saying, how did you do what you did? Would you share with me? Would you teach me? That's masterminding. Can we get together and just have a regular meeting? I don't know enough. I have to have all the answers. These are limiting thoughts. We just want to sweep them aside. They will compete with me. If I share my idea with somebody else, they will compete with me. And that's just a misunderstanding about the world. Competition is lack and limitation. It means somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. We overcome that stuff in thinking into results in M3 here with creation. The only thing that you're competing with is your old self. And if you're always in a process of creating a better version of yourself and getting a little bit better, you transcend all competition at that point. Nobody can, nobody can compete with you. And why is that? Because you're your only unique expression of you. So the more you bring you out and you get better at bringing you out, there's never going to be anybody like you. There's no competition for you. So we sweep that stuff aside. And, and the last one that I have here is I can't be wrong. Of course you can be wrong. Right now, what you're doing is wrong in comparison to the person that you want to grow into who gets these massive results. So we're always going to be wrong until we're right. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how we grow ourselves. Stopping and saying there's a better way. You know, let go of all of the shame, all of the negative feelings, and just get going with this thing. We have to view masterminding from giving and receiving and understanding, taking a deeper dive into giving and receiving. Uh, it's better to what than receive. We know we fill that in with give because that's what we've had programmed into our mind, but that's false. That's a false part of your paradigm. There can be no giving without a receive. There can be no inhale without an exhale. You know, uh, is the world really works in this fashion. You think about the air that you breathe out. The trees are breathing that in and they're breathing out what you need. The whole world breathes, moves, and fluctuates that way. We call it the perpetual transmutation of energy in coaching. But everything is always moving into and out of form. Like the tree leaf falls off of the tree and it lands on the dirt and it decomposes. It becomes part of the dirt and it goes right back up into the form of nutrients into the tree, comes back out in a leaf. It's always going that way. So it's never better to give than receive. They're the same. Every opportunity we can give everything that we can with all of our heart, we want to. And when that opportunity comes for us, which this is where the real block is for most people, to receive, receive graciously, receive kindly, knowing that when you're receiving, that's somebody else giving. You're giving them that feeling of being able to give you something. It's all one and the same. So none is better than the other. Take advantage of both. Think in terms of quantum leaps. Today, there are more, uh, they are more common than ever. Quantum leaps are. We're at a point where we're cruising along and now technology has taken off. And it, it's just crazy how techno technology has taken off. Technology can fuse with any given industry at any given time and just catapult uh, a business to places people never thought before. Farming is doing this in a big way. You know, we're headed to a place in just a few short years where it's no longer going to be necessary for people to even be on a tractor. Tractors are going to run themselves. We've already got GPS. 
Kids know how to run video games. I mean, man, they're excellent at it. So it's right there. Those two things are going to be coming together and people are going to be running their farms, whatever's going out and out of the dirt from inside a house. And that's what I mean. You can take this into mind from the point of view of Uber. You know, Uber didn't even exist just a few short years ago. Now they're the largest car company in the world and they don't even own a car. Uh, TikTok, we didn't even hear about that three or four years ago. And it sold for some, I don't know, hellaciously billion number. You know, it was just an idea. Somebody had an idea and they put it out there. Airbnb, same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever it is that you want to do, it's out there for you too. And we have to learn to open our minds up to this. These ideas that Uber, TikTok, Airbnb, they've all exploded. And Bob did this in the 70s with Prudential because he knew he could step into Prudential and really help them. And he didn't know anything about selling insurance. And that's what insurance was, or uh, Prudential was, is they were an insurance company back then. And yet by knowing that he could do that and he could feel that he had something great to give them, he increased their revenues by hundreds of millions of dollars. And that stuff is documented. And he did it with two simple things. He did it with a meeting, a handshake, you know, in the morning with somebody. That's all the, the, the everybody in the company knew how to do this, how to set a meeting with people and have a handshake. And the second thing that they did was just ask them if they would buy the $100,000 policy. And then that was it. And by people doing that repeatable action over and over again, and Bob believing in himself to give something to Prudential, that raised their revenues by hundreds of millions of dollars. And your idea is out there too. It doesn't have to be difficult. It, has, it doesn't have to be you trying to fly through the window pane. It can be as simple as you turning yourself around and looking the other direction and seeing that open door and flying with minimal effort right out the door to the success that you want. Successful people are often, uh, they're open to sharing their ideas and how they achieve their success. And they are often open to that. It's not whether or not we're open to receiving it. Carnegie connected over 500 of the most successful people in the world to Hill, Napoleon Hill. He was just a magazine writer. He was barely making ends meet. He didn't know he had enough money that night to put himself up in a hotel room. And yet here was Carnegie, the wealthiest man in the world, who connected him with 500 of the world's most successful people. And Hill took that opportunity and he learned from each of them. But he wouldn't, if he wasn't open to that, he wouldn't have done it. And he wouldn't have wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, which has changed countless people's lives with the information that he gathered from those people. He studied them like scientists and he broke down success down to its basics and he put it in that book and he shared it with the world. And it's changed people's lives. And it changed Napoleon Hill's lives too. So mastermind, Carnegie, Ford, Edison, all masterminded. And they credited, credited the mastermind with creating more success than any other thing that they did. That tells you just how powerful this is. Bob Proctor says that he has a mastermind group all of the time. At any given moment, when he has an idea and an inspiration or he has a challenge in his business that he can't get past, he has somebody at the end of his phone within his group that he can call and he can set up a mastermind within a very short amount of time, within hours, and they can have a meeting at solving this problem or implementing this plan and pulling in ideas from other minds. The most successful people in the world know this, and we all need to take that into uh, account. As we go out to seek the success that it is that we want, we need to look at what successful people have done and are doing and take, take it serious. Use this stuff. I use my boy Jeff here all the time to bounce stuff off. What do you think of this? How does it work? How is it going? You know, Give me your feedback on that. One mind, you know, we're infinite and we have this perspective on life, but we're using our mind from a perspective of whatever our paradigm is. Well, my person facing across from me, that's an infinite mind also, but they're having a different paradigm. So they can take a different view and feel things differently than you and give you a different perspective. They can have all the answers that you ever wanted, but we have to open ourselves up to it. We have to ask. We have to present the problem uh, with courage. Not being afraid to say, hey, I got a problem. I got a challenge. 
Or, hey, I have an idea and it's massive and I want to share it with you. How do you, how can we implement this without going through that process of saying, well, what if they think my idea is stupid or something? It's, this is all limiting stuff. It just has to be swept aside here. Here's our action steps for this week. I want you to make it your mission to connect with at least one new person whom you'd benefit greatly from meeting regularly and with regularly with and begin to meet with them. So set that aside and we're going to go through a process to do this. These are the steps for this. Creating this mastermind meeting with this person. I want you first to sit down and understand who you are. Every one of us is a unique expression of spirit and we each have gifts. Get to know what your gifts are because remember the first thing we talked about, masterminding is about giving. What are you? What's your gifts? What do you do effortlessly that people point out so many times? You're so good at that. You don't even think about it because it's part of you. It's just natural for you. It's no big deal. Well, take a step back and become aware about those things and give yourself permission to write that down. What are you good at? What do you have to offer people? And once you've got a good handle on what that is, begin by seeking the knowledge from those whom you consider successful and knowledgeable. What? What did I say? And set a regular meeting with them. So that's steps two and three. Who do you see out there getting results that you want? Who has knowledge that you would like to learn more about? I want to learn more about sharing my message on social media. I don't know what that is and what that's like, but there's people that are really good at that. Find those people and then set a regular meeting with them. Be open to and be open to give and learn and take action. And that's all you've got to do this week. Find your gifts. Seek the people who have knowledge that it is that you would like to acquire. Set a meeting with them. Be open to learn, be open to give, and take action. And that's it. That is the 12th lesson that takes everything that you've learned in the 11 lessons previous to this and blows it out to success well beyond what you ever even thought possible for you. Last step to make this uh, lock it in, speaking of insurance policies. Accountability is the insurance policy for your success. Don't just get into a space where you say, yeah, I'm going to do that. That's a good idea. I like that. I'm emotionally involved with that. Bob tells us that if you have an idea and it moves you emotionally, make a decision to do that idea and take action toward that idea within 30 seconds. That's the big deal. The moment we stop, if we say, wait, I'm gonna, I need to think about this for a minute, you're actually telling yourself, uh, wait a minute, I need to procrastinate on this. The opposite from a cited decision, making a decision is procrastination. We don't like to say that we're procrastinating, but that's exactly what you're doing. So when you take into account that you're going to do this and you want to do this, get somebody involved who's going to hold you accountable. That's what coaching is about. Coaching is about mentoring, watching you from different angles, seeing the things that you can't see about yourself and showing you where you can get better and then holding you accountable to take those steps regularly until they become a part of your paradigm, your habitual behavior so that you can get those results. Get yourself an accountability partner. We're taking two weeks off here at M3 because that was the 12th lesson. Excuse me, not two weeks off. We're taking one week off. We'll be back in two weeks for lesson one. And I don't think we're going to be on Zoom anymore. I think we're going to go Facebook Live. We're going to live stream M3 within our group. So if you haven't joined that group, you guys join that group now. That's M3 Mind Move Manifest. And uh, matter of fact, I think I can throw that in the chat right now uh, while we have any questions and open the floor up to our master at sharing uh, messages on social media, Jeff. And I will throw that link for M3 on there. What's up, my brother? Hey, man. Thanks for having me on today. Appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you jumping on here. You know, M3 has been a little bit slow, so we recorded these messages, you know, and uh, we're just throwing them out there. But I think it'll it'll take that tick up because most people are on Facebook anyway, so it can give them that that jolt to say, oh, hey, wait a minute, M3 is live versus yes, coming I think, different platforms. I think it's an excellent idea. Excellent idea. Me too. 
Yeah. Probably I mean, from mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I was just noticing in the group though that that you know, just posting a couple of things recently, it just got, it spurred a whole bunch of engagement. So I think that group is. Uh, I think there's a lot of people in there that are thirsty to hear this message, man. You know, Jeff, I agree with you, brother. And the funny thing is, is that I sat there for so long and I didn't use it. I was just posting this stuff. But you see, there really is some powerful uh, engagement happening in there. And I love that. I'm just ready to, uh, you know, the only thing I ever care about is, here it is, you know, control V, is uh, helping people get what it is that they truly want. I mean, that's the big, mm -hmm. big win for me. Nobody gets more out of that than me, you know, when they get to walk and share in that journey. And you know a lot about that with your business, because when your people are succeeding, I mean, I, I guarantee there's no guy happier about it than you, because I've experienced that with you. <laughs> no, it is. It's the best feeling in the world. It really, it, um, you know, it, it, it's better for me, for me, getting the result for a client is better than getting paid by the client, really. You know, it really because, you know, it's doing a lot of things. It's making the client happy, making me happy, showing me that what I'm doing, you know, I'm doing what I'm talking about, you know. So there's a lot happening there. It's a good thing, man. That's the part that shows you that, you, you know, you would do it. I mean, if we didn't require money in this world, but we do, you know, it turns out that that's what it makes the world go around, you know, and what we, we need. But if you didn't, you'd still do it because you love it. Yeah, I would. Psychic pay. Psychic I will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, I'm looking forward to seeing this in the group and, and getting more people on and, you know, maybe hearing some more uh, thoughts from some of the people in the group, you know, about some of this stuff. You know, it's, you know, the more potential people that see it, the more, you know, just the more that people can contribute to the conversation, keep it going, you know, stuff like that. So it's going to be a good deal. You know, the ultimate vision is, too, is, is the more we get people to move toward their true self, their, their self that's seeking expression the more that the world is a beautiful place because we all have a unique, a singular unique thing to give in this world. And the more we're doing that, we're serving to our fullest potential and the more that the world is being served that way. And that's just such a harmonious, that's the idea that I'm, that's just what I'm in love with, you know? Yeah. That's why I teach what I teach. I love that, that the uh, story about the fly Back, you know dying before i can make it out when all it had to do is turn around and fly in a 100 percent opposite direction to get what it actually was working for it's a powerful um i don't know if is it a parable i'm not sure what it is but it's powerful metaphor parable i don't know it's a cool story though it's so relatable right it is i mean it means um i mean it makes so much sense sometimes you feel like you're the fly you know banging your head against the wall or buzzing around losing your your strength and you know, it's, oh shit, there's a door there. I could fly out of that door and, and be on, uh, you know, back yeah. back in the game. So. It is, it's so powerful when you think about that because you, you, every day, you know, if you're, you're grinding away at something that you're doing and you're collapsing and, you know, it's like, you're just grinding and grinding and grinding. And you go, wait a minute, why am I grinding? And that's it, like how this whole lesson started when I hit the record button is that, we have to step back and go, wait a minute. Is like, what do I believe about that? Like, is this what I believe about like what life has to be? And if you've been doing it long enough, you're damn right. That's what you believe because you've built it into your paradigm. Yeah. So we have to step back and go, is there some really high velocity moves that I can take? You know, that's going to really catapult myself, you know, like with me being able to step out and say, I'm going to work with freelance crew and we're going to do something that I've never done before, you know, and, and, well, I've been, if I've been grinding for too, too long, you know, and thinking that that's who you are and you're not stepping aside from that and turning around, you're going to do it until you die. And you're just going to die believing that none of that was ever even possible for you. Yeah. Paradigms, when, when, when in reality, there's a whole world that can open up if you just turn around and have a look, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah, dude, I know, man. I, um, uh, I was just really, I was watching that video you did earlier about, you know, the reading video and I uh, got it posted for you. And it was just a great video, man. It just, it really was cool to see you doing that video. You know, after seeing so much of Elmer doing them and then seeing you doing them now, it's like, it's like putting yourself in the same company as him, you know, for me anyway, it is. And it's really like, it's like, wow, you know, here we go. This is a whole new type of content that we're, that you're putting out. 
And I think that people are going to love it, man. I think yeah. that people are going to love it. I think it's I'm really so going to resonate. Glad. You know, too. And so you guided me in that direction. And I love that, too, because, you know, I've just watched Elmer a little bit, but it is such a cool concept. And then I just kind of said, OK, I've seen enough of what Elmer did and I'll just share it my way. And you know about mm -hmm. that. It, 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 it is like taking a sprinkle. It is a bit of a masterminding, even though I've not worked with Elmer uh, personally, it's like taking a little bit of what he's doing and going, OK, sprinkle it in on what you're doing and see how Make that works own. out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just think adding it in is just another type of content that we're going to try and it's going to work well. I, I just, I feel like it is because, you know, like I said, you look in the comments section of those other videos he's doing, people are saying, Oh, thank you so much for doing this type of video. You know, it's like, okay, well, if one person says it, you know, 10,000 people are probably saying it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I actually did one for price Pritchett. That's what I just did right now and dropped it in the Dropbox too. Okay. I'm gonna awesome. The, I'm going to hit the old pause on the recording here. And then right. uh, 